Hello and welcome to Puzzle News, a new series from Puzzle Master where we bring you hot news from the puzzle world. I'm your host Greg from Puzzle Wanderer and I make YouTube videos on my channel as well. We brainstormed this idea and came to the conclusion that this should be a very informative series of videos. And because of this, I gathered interesting information for you guys and I will show you everything now, Felix Ure has announced his next puzzle. The puzzle is called Piston. If you don't know Felix Ure, he makes heavy duty puzzles. He likes his puzzles to be very heavy. Among his last puzzles are Hip Flask, Titan and Kepler. Also on Chris Ramsey's channel, he solved the Monolith puzzle, a huge box with drawers. And this is to Felix Ure's creation. So I asked Felix about his piston creation and he kindly gave me the answers to my questions. And here's what I asked him. What is the thing you're most proud of in piston? Firstly, it's heavy as hell, which is kinda awesome, but puzzle-wise I'd say the number of steps. What was your inspiration for it? Surely something spot your imagination. It came to me more abstractly than a specific point of inspiration, so I can't really answer that. However, it is a combination of two individual sequential discovery puzzles that I prototyped previously, so it came from those two puzzles. It uses a basic idea that I had in my head before I even designed the Titan, but I could never successfully link it into a wider puzzle before. It sounds very vague, you know, but I'm trying to keep my answers spoiler free. I don't know how about you, but these answers made me want the puzzle even more. It's good, reminds me of Danlock. It was also a mix between two previous locks. For those of you who don't know Danlock, it is one of the most revolutionary lock puzzles ever because it implemented sequential discovery elements into a single lock and it made many more designers go after Danlock and produce sequential discovery lock puzzles. Danlock was a combination of two puzzles and it was invented in, I think, in uh, the 90s. Okay, last one. I really like the chess set you've made. Do you have plans? to make other non-puzzle items in your style. I do, I really like nice pens, so like the idea of having a go at making a pen. Other than that, I've got few ideas for more spinning tops and a couple of exciting bespoke commissions coming up. I'm also working on a puzzle box. Felix Ior is working on a puzzle box and this will be extremely amazing. But before I go on with that, he made a big chest set, very beautiful and high level chess set and also he makes occasionally different objects and he likes making them for the feel of brass and he just likes objects. I once asked him what's your favorite thing about puzzles and he said I just like how they feel in my hand. I just want to say that I am extremely excited when I saw that he's making a puzzle box I was extremely excited because Felix makes very elegant puzzles and I can't imagine what kind of puzzle box it will be. Maybe it will even surpass the classic first box from Will Street Boss. I'm just sure that Felix will do his best on this one. There's one thing that came out of nowhere and plagued the whole world. And no, this is not COVID-19. It's actually a puzzle based on COVID-19 by John Adrian, a nameless puzzle designer who came up with his design on the Facebook groups and decided to sell his new puzzle. The puzzle looks amazing. It really looks extremely professional. It looks like it's resin printed and it's finished in a very interesting way. When I asked John Adrian a couple of questions about this design, his answers were really interesting. His views on designing are different from anything I saw. Because John is very new and we don't know a lot about him, I decided to ask him a few uh, relatively basic questions. Where are you based and what's your primary occupation? It looks like you have some production background with the high quality you managed to achieve. John is based in Tampa Bay area of Florida. And yeah, he has background in 3D design and machining. At the moment, he's gone full time with his online store and art. He used to run a replica and movie props shop in Etsy, but it closed. He actually was inspired by small businesses like First The Shop, Chris Ramsey's shop, to make his own brand. So this is where the interesting part kicks in. John doesn't call himself a puzzle designer. John is actually an artist. When I asked him, what do you do? He said, I'm an artist and part of the way I express myself is through designing puzzles. What was your inspiration to the pandemic puzzle and what other puzzles you're planning nowadays? I was making some coronavirus keychains for a friend and noticed it looked similar to the hedgehog in a cage puzzle and wondered if it would actually work. At the time I didn't fully understand how hedgehog puzzles work but after trying to reverse engineer a few from photos since, I didn't have one on hand. I made a few versions of the end cage to see what I could get away with. 
I wanted the viewers to look as close to the Corona viewers as possible. It was a balance of managing the opening size with the amount and length the virus spikes. After some trial and error and with a few versions, I got a set I was happy with, so the functional part was figured out. Next was the other parts and details to make it look like it belonged in a sci-fi world. I didn't want just to make it look sci-fi-ish. The details need to look like they serve the purpose, so that when people look at it and play with it, they could tell the story. The amount of expression in this puzzle is enormous. I wanna get this puzzle. <laughs> After that he had he added side vents for cooling and various details implied the sound device plugs into it. A glowing power bar up front and serial in the back since I consider it if it plugged into a device it must need internal power for when it's unplugged and I imagine some scientists would serialize the samples. Unfortunately I couldn't make the virus float like I wanted so I made an added piece of a center peg that holds the virus up. It's not necessarily part of the puzzle it's more for display but I've had a few people not realize it comes out and not removing it actually makes the puzzle next to impossible. It can technically be done, but what would want anyone to rush breaking it? And of course, the final finish is meant to look grimy. I like to think something went wrong with the lab that held these, and after the disaster, people did rediscover them in the decrypt remains of the former lab and unknowingly let them loose on the world. This puzzle is the incarnation of the last one and a half years. How much has COVID been here? Maybe even more than one and a half years? So thanks to John for the interview and let's move on. Ho ho ho, the secret Santa is coming close. If you don't know, there is a mechanical puzzle discord with more than 1000 members. In the secret Santa game, everyone sends a puzzle to a random stranger puzzler in the world. So in fact, everyone sends a puzzle and everyone receives a puzzle. It can be puzzles, it can be whatever you want, okay? But mainly about Puzzles. And it's a very fun game. I participated in it last year. I am intending to participate this year as well. If you are into this kind of thing, I recommend you to check out the Discord and sign up for this game. Next up is a new designer spotlight. We really want to make the world of puzzles thrive. And what's a better way to do it than to spotlight a new and cool designer? Today's designer is Fortunate Sun Puzzle. This guy, James Fortune, makes 3D printed puzzles and for now he makes mostly her puzzles. So I asked him a few questions like I like to do and this was our conversation. Are you planning to release more birds or are there plans for other types too? How did you start designing and what is your main occupation? Birds are definitely my bread and butter right now. I've been solving them a lot and have enjoyed designing them as well, so that will be probably my main focus for the time being. I do have a couple of rough concepts for some 3D packing puzzles that may see life. Ultimately, I'd love to make an SD, a sequential discovery, but that will be a big undertaking. Only have a few rough ideas right now, so definitely nothing soon. I got a 3D printer a while back and had been printing other folks' designs for a while. Started with that and evolved to me trying out a few small designs of my own and has grown from there. While solving puzzles or even just in general, ideas kept popping into my head and now I'm trying to actually make them real. A lot of designers say they drown in ideas while solving other puzzles and this is the case right here as well. I'm trying to actually make them real, it's fun for me and hopefully other folks are enjoying them as well. My main occupation is in supply chain as master scheduler for food production, so that's been eventful as well. Which designer is your biggest inspiration for your design so far? My favorites lately are definitely Alphonse Eichmanns and Stefan Baumegger. You'll probably see some of the inspiration in my latest But Quick note, Stefan Baumegger makes very interesting themed bird puzzles and Alphonse Eichmanns makes a lot of zoobers and very difficult high piece high level birds. Let's wish James Fortune good luck with his new shop. And from what I know, people are very satisfied with the purchases from his shop. Also, there's a new and exciting puzzle master puzzle, which is called 
The Bomb Squad by Andy Gilker from Canada. I asked Andy to send me some behind the scenes photos and he managed to send me a lot of them. So I will include them right now. Andy only makes puzzles that are not mechanical. He likes to make them like games, like escape room in a puzzle. His first puzzle, the Tesla box, was very interesting. I solved it along with Puzzle Guy, you can see it on his video. After that, Puzzle Guy interviewed Andy. They talked about designing and they talked about the way of thinking. And I really think that you should watch this interview. Awesome. What is your background, first of all? My background, I'm right now, I'm, I'm finishing my degree in biotech engineering. On the last note, before we finish the video, I want to highlight Puzzle Guy's new video solving the Tesla box. Coincidentally, I'm in the video, but even if I wasn't, I would recommend you to watch this video because the Tesla box was amazing to solve. This puzzle is really something out of the world and you should watch it. We wanted to make it a bit more interesting than to just mention the person. A little bit about Puzzle Guy. He moved to the Czech Republic four and a half years ago. He didn't know about puzzles. He didn't know they existed. But in the Czech Republic, if you visit there, there are a lot of puzzle stores, a ton of puzzle stores. Once he went into a puzzle store, he started buying some Hanayamas and he really liked them. And he's been making videos for three and a half years, which is a lot of time for all us creators. This is a very long time to be persistent and consistently uploading videos. This is not an easy thing. Recently, he blew up on, uh, on YouTube. He has 400,000 subscribers on his channel, which is very amazing and well deserved. Cool fact about Puzzle Guy is that he was born in Belarus. The state of Belarus is very unstable. I don't know if you know what's happening there, but Puzzle Guy decided to move out of there because he didn't want his family to grow a place like this. This was today's Puzzle News, and I ask you, dear viewer, to comment what would you want to see on the next episode of Puzzle News. We will be choosing comments to be articles in our next episodes so please feel free to leave a comment with suggestions of what would you want us to make content about comment below if you like this video please leave a like and we'll see you guys next time